Welcome back to Genshin Interact. Today we're going to be talking about Sijuin and looking at her kit for her pre-release analysis. We've already done one going over Koran and we're extremely hyped to see what she has. Sijuin has actually also been something that a lot of people have been looking forward to. You know, talk about her being a 4 star or a 5 star. We now know she's a 5 star and we know that she's going to be going into HP% percent for an ascension and kind of just jumping right into her talents in general as well. Nothing really is kind of crazy uh, different about her normal attacks. Uh, it seems like, uh, you know, before we jump into everything, it seems like she's going to be a healer, bound of life, HP character that does a lot of damage as well, you know, or at least a good amount of damage. It's a weird kind of mix and kind of like kind of thing that's kind of going on here. Uh, if you could say it, it's almost like a Kokomi 2.0, kind of like a change to how Kokomi works. It's very similar. Uh, to an extent it, you really have to read into it but it's kind of like that if i had to really put a character behind it but there's nothing crazy good about you know leveling or going into the normal attack talent there's nothing too different there uh the charge attack so it's kind of like this while you're charging you know and you're at the full charge it'll do like slow moving little bubbles going towards a target i don't necessarily know if that's going to do a lot of damage uh it doesn't seem so so rift at least beyond the normal attack what does her skill look like her skill, much like Clarence, is also another dissertation, but her skill is pretty crazy. I, I was actually watching some other stuff and materials. I was actually watching TGS. Uh, if you guys haven't checked him out, he, he makes great content, uh, gr great theory crafter. So go check him out. But basically, Sijuin, uh, with her skill, she'll blow up what's called a bolstering bubble bomb. But basically, it's it, you're blowing a bubble, and it's going to go out to the opponents, and it's going to deal hydro damage uh, based on Sijuin's max HP to the opponents it hits. And when it hits an opponent, it's going to restore HP to your party members, all of the party members. And that's a, that's a really good thing. I think that's the saving grace, I guess you'd, you could say, of her kit, is the fact that she is a full team-wide party healer, which is good because, especially if you have Farina, it's always good to have team-wide healers, like Shan Yun, for example, just because you are countering Farina's drain on the HP and maximizing the fanfare for Farina by healing everyone. So that's going to be very good. And also you're getting Hydro Resonance too. So re you're restoring HP to all your party members except Seizrin herself. But the amount of healing, once again, is based on Seizrin's max HP. And this bubble I was talking about that she's going to blow and it's going to bounce between the enemies, it can bounce up to five times and it's going to disappear and restore HP to Sijuin at the very end. So you're restoring HP to everyone while it's bouncing between the enemies. As it hits them, it's healing based on the HP. And after it's bounced the fifth time and disappears, then it heals Sijuin as well. When there aren't any opponents though, the bubble just kind of bounce on its own nearby. And only one of these bubbles can be created by Sijuin uh, at once. So you, can, you can't like have two of these out or whatever. You can actually hold the skill and it does uh, kind of increase, have a different effect kind of upgrades the skill and you'll enter an aiming mode she kind of has like this little gun we've all seen her splash art she's got like this little bubble gun with like the this heart shaped scope but you can hold the scale she'll blow it out it'll be a little bit bigger it gets like twice the size and it increases the damage that it deals as it bounces uh by like only five percent and also the healing by another five percent so it's a little bit more powerful my thought on this is when she released is it worth to even use the charged up right so for example like Shanyun, especially when used as a support, how many people actually use all three of those skill uses to go into the plunge? I Sometimes I, I know I do, so I'm not like saying you should or you shouldn't, but I know I do watch some people and they, they will just use the first just so they get the plunge out for particles. I'm kind of seeing that here too. And like the same thing could be said about Charlotte. A lot of people I, I watch that use Charlotte aren't actually holding Charlotte's skill to get the uh, I think it's uh, the focused impression or whatever it's called. They just go into the hole, make sure they get all the enemies in the scope, and then just let it go because it's all about cry application. So I, maybe I'm, I'm seeing something like that here because the increase is so minimal. I don't even know if it's worth it. But the biggest thing that I think it could be worth to use the hold skill on Sijuin is because you can create th this bigger bubble and it can actually imprison these maybe smaller enemies and they can't move. So maybe that's going to be good, but like I'm not expecting this to be usable on bosses. I'm not thinking for a second that's going to work. Much like the frozen reaction, I think it's going to be like that. Any opponents that can be frozen can also be affected by something like this. So because it's on smaller enemies, it's like, okay, do I, do I even use this? Probably not. In addition to her skill, now you can just tap her hold, but this will happen either way. You'll actually create two source water droplets. When Sijuin absorbs these, it will grant Sijuin a bond of life worth 10% of her max HP. And when Sijuin's bond of life is cleared, she regains one elemental energy for every 2000 HP worth of the bond of life that was cleared. 
Seize Wind can regain up to five elemental energy in this way. Yeah, I do think that the skill is very interesting in what it kind of talks about. There is a little bit, it's like you said, it's a dissertation and a half. And if anything, you know, I think she is going to be a better support for Chloron probably than Arlequino, uh, just for a lot of different reasons, but at least it seems like she would be better for that. There is some cool things that I think she does, you know, and the whole version of the skill could just be just kind of for fun more rather than, you know, a crazy amount of extra damage or whatever, you know, so there's a lot of things that I think you could kind of try to force into that, but besides that, at least looking beyond her skill and into her burst, her burst states that basically she's going to do this huge AoE, you know, hydro damage hit. Uh, it's not really a, a crazy amount of damage. It is more than what the skill is doing, at least it seems like. Uh, but in addition to obviously doing this AoE hydro damage hit, uh, Siege Wind will absorb up to two nearby water source water droplets within a certain range of her right before she uses the skill. Obviously, you're, you're absorbing it, which will give her a bond of life. I don't know. I, I don't know, Rift, what your thoughts are on this burst, but it's a little weird, at least for me, to see what the burst is even for. Yeah, I think it's all about, uh, talking about the source water droplets, it's kind of like all about just getting a refund on the energy because all she gets out of absorbing a source water droplet that we talked about in the skill is when siege wind's bond of life is cleared she'll regain the elemental energy so it's kind of just like a refund like here you go here's some energy back just as, as soon as you use it this is just the way uh, i guess you're able to absorb it because there's nowhere else we see in the kit as of right now that you can actually absorb the droplets coming from her skill so it's like that's how you do it there is actually some damage potential in the burst. It's nothing crazy, but the caveat to that is you have to be on field. You have to stay on field for it. And so you're going to lose about like three, four seconds of rotation just to stay on her. So it kind of remind me of someone like Yao Yao. Yao is a great character, but one of the catches to her burst is you have to stay on field and do move around, do attacks, jump, sprint, whatever, to kind of increase the healing so you can move off. So it's, it's kind of like that. Honestly, just having looked at everything, my initial impression is actually a little bit disappointing of the character because another thing I know is her Hydro application as a Hydro character isn't that great. Her burst only applies Hydro once, okay? And her skill is the same thing. And you're like, okay, Rift, but what about like the bubble thing you talked about? It's gonna be bouncing between the enemies like five times, right? That's gonna be like good Hydro, right? Well, no, it only applies Hydro on the very first hit bounce. After that, it's just, it's not, applying hydro and I, I look at that I'm just like why why not like right I mean what's so good about hydro being one of the best elements in the game it's application it's avenue for so many good reaction based teams it's one of the setups for vaporize it's a prime setup for any bloom related team so it's just a good element to have but like with Cedron's application it's just it's just not there so I'm kind of turned off by that and maybe they'll change that I hope they do um especially I, I don't know I just she, it makes her feel less like a Hydro character because like she's just not applying the element very well. So I am a little bit concerned about that aspect of her. As far as healing though, I think she'll be really, really good. Um, like you mentioned at the beginning of the video, Vixen, I think she's basically like 2.0 Kokomi. So maybe it, we'll see, it's like a power creep version of her there, but still maybe not because she's just so unique. She's a Bond of Life user that heals. So I don't know, I, I feel like me personally, I would still prefer Kokomi just because of the application. Looking at the passives, her first one is called Requires Appropriate Rest. Sijuan grants herself the semi-strict bed rest effect for 18 seconds after using her skill. Sijuan gains an 8% hydro damage bonus and 10 stacks of convalescence. When the elemental skills of your own characters on standby, other than Sijuan, deal damage. Okay, so when your skills from your other characters are dealing damage, right? They will consume a stack of the convalescence on Sijuan, and we just said she had 10 of those, and increase the damage dealt by this instance of the elemental skill. Every 1,000 HP Sijuan has above 30,000 increases the damage by flat 65. The maximum damage increase for elemental skills that can be gained this way is 1,800. Reading that, I just, I, I don't know. I, I'm not really impressed because I'm not seeing percentages, okay? Like what we like to see. It's just a flat increase. It's like when you get flat attack on an artifact versus attack percent. So I'm just, when I read that, I'm just like, okay, eh, all right, cool. And, and besides, we're focusing on her as a healer, right? So I'm just, I don't know, maybe maybe it'll be better than I'm thinking. So we'll, we'll just have to see. What are your thoughts fixing on that? Well, I do think that the whole point of her is to kind of be this healer idea. And I think that's where they kind of try to double dip a little bit and i don't know necessarily if these numbers are obviously i think these numbers are going to change i don't think in a flat 65 or an 1800 or whatever necessarily makes sense right now at least 
So I'm, I'm hoping that these damage numbers can kind of change so that it makes a little bit more sense to actually put in for us to understand. Um, you know, besides just a flat number uh, of increase, because that flat number can change based off of anything and everything that we try to, you know, throw on top of it, whether it's a crit or a damage bonus or, you know, outside sources that can help damage increases. It's a little weird to see how she's kind of built because, you know, with Kokomi, you could kind of at least understand how she kind of works and how she's going to kind of run. But with her, it's a little bit weird right now. But besides that first passive, I think she might be a little bit more damage focused as well, like you were talking about. But with the second passive talent, it kind of lends itself to more healing. Sijuan gains a healing bonus based on the total current value of Bonds of Life on all party members, which is where a lot of people are starting to get the idea that she's supposed to be on uh, Bond of Life teams. For each 1000 HP worth of Bonds of Life on party members, Sijuin gains a 3% healing bonus. The maximum healing bonus that can be attained this way is 30%, which means obviously you can have 10 instances of that, which means you can have 10,000 HP worth across four different characters to have, you know, 10,000 HP worth of Bond of Life on four different characters. I think that's the idea that people are trying to get across, is you're trying to have as much Bond of Life as possible so that you can increase her healing. I think there's either one or two ways that you're going to kind of go about her, kind of like Kakomi. Either you're going a super healer route, or you're going kind of a damage, you know, and a healing route on her, you know, where the healing is just an added bonus. Uh, I think a lot of people, though, are going to be, especially since she's going to be running alongside Chloron, I do think a lot of people are going to be running her instead as just a straight up healer. Well, that's everything we have looking at Sijuin. If you guys did like the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Kind of tell us what you think about Sijuin and kind of at least what you guys are expecting from her and hopefully expecting a little bit more. But that's everything we have for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.